Welcome to the ISOL debrief on the Monothematic Conference, NASH beyond the acronym. It was in Riga from the 12th to the 14th of May 2016. My name is Jean-François Dufou. I am the co-organizer with Manuel Romero Gomez from Sevilla, Spain. And, and uh, Vlad Ratio from Paris, France. So we would like to highlight in a few minutes uh, the key points of the meeting for those who were not able to attend. So, Manuel, what do you think you want to remind yourself after from this meeting? Highlighting the, 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 the meeting was divided in several roundtable, trying to identify the hot topic and the diagnosis of NAFLD is uh, quite important because at this time it is supported by the liver biopsy. Liver biopsy is mandatory to now steatosis, uh, steatopatitis, and fibrosis, and has been a hot, controversial uh, topic for, for, many, for many years. And the key point is uh, the uh, conference, the speech by Dina Tinakos, that show us how uh, expert pathologists could improve uh, looking at the liver biopsy, detecting exactly the parameter, the histological parameter that impact on the prognosis, and showing us that uh, the liver biopsy is not just a, a photo, it's a dynamic disease, and we have no red line to se se segregate uh, the different histological parameters. We have a more continuum spectrum of lesion, and we need to know exactly when we are at each time to detect exactly what is happening in the liver. We, we spent the, the, the Friday afternoon discussing non-invasive method. It's a, a midnight uh, in Nafoli, and we discuss uh, in a deeper manner uh, serum-based method, uh, non-invasive method of imaging like elastography method supported by magnetic resonance image and seems to be the most useful image, but is uh, less available and is expensive. Finally, we have the opportunity to discuss how can we develop a biomarker, be absolutely strict in the characteristic, the future of the biomarker to be implemented with success in clinical practice. We are close to reach a non-invasive algorithm to define the disease, uh, taking account both the liver biopsy as, as the gold standard and also outcome related to liver disease, survival, or cardiovascular risk. Very good. Yes, I agree. I really like these presentations also. But there were so many good presentations during this meeting that it's really difficult to select the one. But you, Vlad, what uh, you want people to remember? So I think, first of all, it, it's, it's a remarkable that um, a scientific society as large as EASL decided to dedicate really a three-day conference to this topic. I think this really speaks to the importance of this disease in our clinical practice and to all the huge advances that have been made in understanding the disease, who is at risk, how do people progress, and how to treat them. So uh, I, I'm very grateful to EASL for having taken this initiative. We visited a, a, a very nice city in places not used to go often, uh, the beautiful uh, old city of Riga. And, um, and it, although it was a, a rather small group of people attending, it, it, although still more than 150 attendees, it was a very dynamic group with a lot of interaction between the speakers and, and um, the participants. And I think that, that was really gives give a very special flavor to the meeting. So uh, I think these objectives were met. And uh, if you go on the webcast and see um, the, um, the rendition of, of the talks and, and the question and answer session, you'll realize, uh, for those who unfortunately couldn't be here, that uh, a lot of uh, scientific exchange was going on during, uh, during this meeting. Now, uh, regarding, um, uh, I particularly followed the session on, on therapeutics, uh, because uh, now we're getting to a point where we start having good prospects for therapy in this disease. And in the beginning, we set the stage by identifying the mechanism, the biological mechanism of disease progression uh, in terms of uh, fibrotic disease, in terms of carcinogenic disease, because liver cancer is an important part of NASH as well. And then in the second part of this, uh, the last uh, day, uh, we discussed about overall management of this disease. And we had fantastic presentations about the role of nutrition, micronutrients as well as macronutrients. 
we learned a lot of things about, uh, uh, from this literature that we, usually we do not know very well about what is healthy to eat, what is unhealthy to eat. I learned that even Diet Coke is not as healthy as we thought it was because it's not all about sugar. It might be about other compounds that are in, in, in these diet soft drinks. So it's not because you consume these dietary uh, soft drinks that you are uh, protected from uh, any harmful effects. And then we had a very nice lecture on the impact of um, physical activity and uh, how you can understand the way uh, people direct their lifestyle and manage their lifestyle and how this impacts on their disease. This was a really eye-opener in terms of understanding that sometimes you're not the only one in taking the right decisions. And even though you want to take the right decisions, um, Mike Trenell explained to us, and you can see all that on the webcast, that uh, sometimes you are dependent in a very heavy way uh, to your, uh, to your in, by, by your environment. And even though you would try to make the appropriate changes in your lifestyle, sometimes the environment does not allow you to do so. So it's a very complex issue trying to change people's lifestyle. It's easy to say, it's difficult to implement and even more difficult to maintain. And he explained all the intricacies of these decisions and the, uh, the consequences uh, of the interaction between the patient and his environment, and it's not easy to change. So therefore, the, st the stage was set to, to study the, the, the importance of drugs or pharmacotherapies, because we know that our non-pharmacological options are limited. And, um, and it was a very dynamic session where we reviewed the data of some of the drugs that have shown efficacy in treating this disease, and there are some. Uh, so glitazones, obeticolic acid, elafibranor, those drugs for which we have large studies now. And then we reviewed the pipeline for this disease, which is, which is really very, very vibrant and very diverse. Uh, so th that was very, um, very, uh, very enlightening. And uh, uh, because of the webcast for ESL members, uh, anybody can now, uh, um, can now learn from this, uh, from this meeting. Absolutely. I think that as a, even if you were here in the room listening to the presentation, they were so dense, they were so well done, yeah. that uh, I will go to the webcast I to, will go to, back to again to listen to some presentation. I really enjoy also some clinical presentation on the effect of a sleep apnea mm -hmm. syndrome and uh, the progression of NASH. We had a very good review on this and also an important aspect of which is, uh, uh, renal disease in patients with an alcoholic. We covered all aspects yes. of the disease, yeah. But what I also particularly like is mm -hmm. the fact that we learn mm -hmm. that a little bit of alcohol ah. it's all a question of quantity I mean, but a, a little, little bit, bit of alcohol yeah. it's 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 good actually mm -hmm. it's good huh? and let's keep the definition that way a little bit so <laughs> no, no numbers no numbers <laughs> to what fits in so, better but yeah. uh yeah very very interesting talk about uh, the implication yeah. of alcohol yeah. so. and coffee coffee is good so i think uh if you want to really enjoy as we did in the last few days uh, this meeting, you have to go on the webcast on Liver Tree on the ESL site.